Built on a rock, the church shall stand, even when steeples are falling. Crumbled half spires in every land, bells still are chiming and calling. Calling the young and old to rest, calling the souls of those distressed, longing for life everlasting. Christ built a house of living stones. We are his own habitation. He fills our hearts, his humble thrones, granting us life and salvation. Where two or three will seek his face, he in their midst will show his grace, blessings upon them bestowed. Hello, welcome to worship with Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in La Crescent, Minnesota. I am Pastor Anna Sorensen. As we prepare for this time of worship, I have a few announcements to share with you. The first is that today, January the 23rd, is the annual meeting of the congregation, and we invite all of our voting members to join together at 10 a.m., either in the fellowship hall of the church or using the Zoom link that was provided in the congregational emails this week. As we celebrate the ministry of 2021, elect new leaders, and look forward to 2022. And I also want to let you know that next week, January the 30th, the Sunday morning video will be a devotion from Pastor Mike with a full video worship service to follow on Monday. And this is because at the in-person worship service, we're gonna be thanking and blessing Pastor Kent Johnson as he moves into retirement. And we want to be able to share this blessing with the whole congregation, both the congregation in person and those worshiping at home. In today's scripture and sermon, we will hear about our membership in the body of Christ and how we are bound as a people of faith one to another. Our spiritual practice for the month of January is curiosity. And as we consider today how we are members of the body of Christ, I invite you to be curious about how you relate to others. It seems to me that living through two years of pandemic and in a time when political tensions are often high, many of us find it challenging to understand people who think or act or vote differently. Here is the question for curiosity. It comes from Brene Brown. What if I choose to believe that everyone is doing the best they can? What if I choose to believe that everyone is doing the best they can? This question knocked me off my feet and changed my outlook on the world when I first started contemplating it. I have become less judgmental and more gracious with others. We find a similar focus in the small catechism, in the explanation of the Eighth Commandment, which teaches us that the command, do not bear false witness, means that we are to interpret everything our neighbor does in the best possible light. So today, as we have a moment of silence and prepare ourselves for worship, I invite you to be curious about how you see others. The Lord be with you. Let us confess our sin 
as an offering of trust in God's love and forgiveness. God of restoration, whenever we come home to you, we realize how far we have strayed and how much we have forgotten of your love. We have not loved you with our whole hearts or loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us, heal us, restore us to relationship with you and one another. We pray through Jesus Christ, in whom we trust. <coughs> Amen. People of God, as a called and ordained minister of Jesus Christ, I assure you that you have been restored in the grace of God. Do not mourn, therefore, but rejoice. This is a new day for you and for me. Amen. scripture reading today comes from the epistle of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It is verses 12 through 27. St. Paul writes, For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized, into one body, Jew or Greek, slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, then all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, then all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually, members of it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I am a member of the body of Christ. You are a member of the body of Christ. We, together, are members of the body of Christ. As somebody reminded me this week, I'm also an Amazon Prime member. There are many things you can be members of. You can be a member of the Country Club, or the Rotary, the Lions Club, your alumni association. That word, member, means being part of a whole. But membership in the body of Christ is so much more 
than just being one among several or one among many who are aligned for a common interest. When I was a camp counselor, we used to teach this scripture with a skit, which we called the big toe skit. Now, various counselors and sometimes campers would each portray being a member of the body. And one of the people was the big toe. Now, the big toe would go around saying, I'm not important. They don't need me anyway. Or sometimes the other members of the body would say, Toe, we don't need you. You don't even need to come today. But eventually, this skit made known that the whole body together was a kicker, a football kicker. And it turns out that the big toe is essential if you're going to make a field goal. Membership in the body of Christ comes with mutual relationship. It comes with obligation to other members of the body of Christ and also with their obligation to us. When one part of the body suffers, the whole suffers. When we rejoice, the whole body rejoices. And we see this at work in churches, in Bible studies, in small groups, when we share anxieties or griefs. And your brothers and sisters in Christ listen and offer sympathy. I saw that happening this week in a small group at Prince of Peace. And no one said, oh, I know how you feel, or tried to fix the grieving. They just listened. And we prayed. And then we each took those griefs and anxieties into our personal prayer time. Membership in the body of Christ is not like membership in any other organization. Only membership in the body of Christ is focused on the cross. The body of Christ is cruciform. That is cross-shaped. In a clergy Bible study last week, one of my wise colleagues asked this question. What is the difference between membership in the body of Christ and discipleship to Christ? I thought, what a great question. What a hard question. What is the difference between membership and discipleship? So I spent a lot of time thinking about that question. And I want to take an attempt to put the two together. Discipleship is following Jesus. Discipleship is about our relationship with the Holy Trinity, about us going where Jesus leads us. And membership in the body of Christ is about our relationship with other disciples and about our mutual obligations one to another. Think of it this way. Discipleship is vertical in a metaphorical sense. It's about me and Jesus. It's about this relationship. But discipleship alone, seeking only to nurture my relationship with God, is only part of Christian life. And it's a diminished faith. Membership in the body of Christ is horizontal. It is outward reaching. In membership, we spread our arms out toward one another, much like Jesus spread his arms out on the cross. And if discipleship is vertical and membership is horizontal, then the life of faith is, in fact, cruciform. It is cross-shaped. The life of faith nurtures both 
our relationship with God and our relationship with the world. Now, it's not in the scripture I read today, but in Ephesians and in Colossians, we learn that the body of Christ, in this body, there is a head, and the head is Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18 puts it this way. Christ himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. Now I want to take you back to that big toe, the unwanted, unloved big toe in the camp skit for just a minute. Because by the end of that skit, the toe learned that she had a valuable skill, an essential role for that body to fulfill its purpose, kicking the football. But the toe on its own does not kick the football. There must be a foot, an ankle, a calf, a knee, a thigh, hips, a body, tendons, muscles, and they all have to work together. But even if all of those body parts, all those members are present, that body cannot kick the football unless the head is engaged. The kicker must decide to kick. The brain has to send signals to the muscles, and each member has to play its part at the right time. In the body of a kicker, the toe and the foot and all of the parts go where the head directs. And the more the body practices the direction that the head intends, the easier it becomes to be a successful kicker, just as the body was made to do. And so it is in the church. We each have our part to play, but we only can go where the head directs. Christ is the one who holds it all together. Christ is the one who sets us on the path, who gives us direction as a body. And the more we, the members of Christ's body practice following the direction of Christ our head, the easier it becomes for us, the church, to work together as one in the way Christ calls us. The more we practice our discipleship, the easier it becomes to be a member of the whole body of Christ. And the more we practice our work as a member of the body of Christ, the more our discipleship is strengthened. A cruciform, a cross-shaped life, needs both things, both a relationship with God and a mutual relationship with other members of the body of Christ. So today, my encouragement to you is this. Tend to your relationship with Christ. Practice discipleship, things like worship and scripture, prayer and listening, story and ritual and silence. Tend to the body of Christ, to your relationship with others, looking and listening for their needs, offering encouragement, reaching out to strengthen relationships. And this is a hard one asking for help when you need it. A body in which each of us are members, and each member is attentive to the leading of Christ our head and attentive to one another. This is the church that God has in mind for us. We'll stumble along the way, of course, but we will keep trying. And I pray that the Holy Spirit brings us closer to Christ and to one another every day. Amen.
which we bless and we the many throughout the earth we are one body in this one Lord Gentile or Jew Servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we Holy God, who gathered us by the power of the Holy Spirit into one body, hear us as we pray. We pray for those who have been chosen as leaders of the people, that they may attend to the voices of their people and be guided by you. We pray for the church. We pray for our Bishop Felix, for pastors and teachers, and for those who will be chosen for leadership in this congregation, that all may faithfully live your word and care for your body. We pray for those who are in need, and we pray for ourselves, that we may open our hearts to their cries and become more your body for one another. We pray for those who are sick, for those living with physical challenges, spiritual struggles for those who are dying. Make us agents of your healing and your hope. God of creation, make us the body of the risen Christ, united even in our diversity. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that together we may work for your coming kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. People of Prince of Peace and visitors to this video worship, thank you for your support of ministry here. If you find this video worship meaningful, 
helpful. We invite you to financially support the ministries here, and you can do that by going to the church website, princeofpeacelacrescent.org, and clicking Give. And if you're using the electronic bulletin, there is a direct link there. And again, thank you. People of God, may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Go in peace, being the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Build us up, Lord, build us up. Set in us a strong foundation. Lead us to do your holy will. Form and shape your new creation. Build us up, Lord, build us up. As we guide and teach each other, help us to share your love with the world. Every sister, every brother, growing in Christ, we plant seeds for the kingdom. We follow in faith what's begun. Lord, set in our hearts the Because